Okay, well, I suspect that my presentation will depart from the general theme of believing God. My interest in elucidating the phenomenon of hope is motivated by a phenomenology of the structure of the experience of illness. More specifically, I'm interested in elucidating the modern structures of the experience of suffering. Okay. For instance, in palliative medicine, the notion of unbearable suffering is conceived as a multidimensional phenomenon that includes four dimensions, physical, psychological, social, and existential. It is widely accepted that in the existential dimension, suffering can be expressed in the domains of mortality, freedom, meaning, and hope. Okay, you have here some reference concerning the, the notion of existential suffering, it's widely accepted. And of course, um, in the elucidation of this notion, it's recognized that uh, existential suffering can be expressed in four uh, domains. One of them is the domain of hope. That's interest for me on, on phenomenological elucidation of hope. With this background in mind, I will focus on a very specific problem, which was simply indicated in a phenomenological analysis of hope. Matthew Radcliffe drew a distinction between hope as an intentional phenomenon and radical hope, following in this uh, a suggestion by Jonathan Lear. In addition to analyzing the nature and function of radical hope, Radcliffe also examined the different ways in which one can lose it, insofar as it is not just the presence or absence of the fundamental form of hope. In a footnote of his paper of 2011, uh, What is to Lose Hope? Uh, he maintains, I quote, that pre-intentional hope is thus akin to faith in some respect, but they also defer. Faith can have a determinate content, whereas radical hope survives the loss of all such contents. Also, faith can involve unwavering certainty, whereas radical hope is a sense of there being certain kinds of possibilities. The aim of my talk now is to offer a suggestion on how to flesh out this remark. Given the, that radical hope is conceived by Radcliffe as very intentional, let me first sum up some analysis of hope as an intentional state. The standard account states two necessary conditions of hoping. A hopes that P, A desires that P, and A believes that it's in some degree probable that P. Criticism in the literature motivate a strength in the account by, for example, Le Bovens and Philippe Petit, so the strength account, A devotes mental energy to the prospect that P, A acts as if she believed that P would obtain. However, even this strength in account received an important criticism. It fails to maintain a distinction between hope and despair. This criticism was presented by Ariel Meiraf. So an external factor account was put forth. A recognized P as beyond her causal or epistemic powers. A views the external factors as good. And A resigns to external factors viewed as good. I believe this approach is consistent with the fine-grained analysis presented by Professor Steinbock in his papers of 2006 and 2011 and the chapter five of his moral emotions. Yet, uh, his phenomenological account highlights structural aspects of the phenomenon of hope that are not captured by the formal analysis summarized above. In the experience of hope, he identifies one, 
a temporal structure awaiting enduring. Two, a relation of hope to otherness, the dependence on something other than the one who hopes. And three, a modality of possibility, the possibility hoped for as engaged and sustainable. The experience of hope, therefore, requires the satisfaction of metanormative conditions. In A hopes that P, A understands P as sustainable, neither impossible nor necessary, as a meaningful possibility that matters to A, as future and dependent on something other than A. Furthermore, the act of hoping implies reliance or trust in the external factor, awaiting and enduring. Finally, hoping makes the hoper conscious of herself as vulnerable, dependent, finite, not found, open to and attainable by the ground of hope. While this brief presentation does not do justice to the richness of the phenomenological analysis presented by Professor Steinbock, it suffices to indicate the notion of intentional hope. It denotes a state that has a determinate content and which is directed towards something, a possible scenario, states of affairs, or event. Let us know look at another form of hope characterized precisely by being pre-intentional. Radcliffe offers an account of the structure of, of a non-intentional form of hope addressing the phenomenality, ontology, and function of radical hope. This structural analysis is based on the history of existential feelings. Let me just stress three points about the structure of existential feelings. Ontologically, existential feelings are affective phenomena, not emotions, but feelings of a special kind, akin to moods, atmospheres, background feelings, Stimmungen. They are bodily feelings, conceived neither as reaction to bodily changes, nor as directed towards the body or parts of the body. The body is a medium of experience something, which in this case is not an intraworldly entity. These feelings are existential because they are manners of position in a space of possibilities. This space is a dimension in a formal sense, endowed with different types of possibilities. Regarding the phenomenality, existential feelings are usually reflexive, admitting reflective and thematic modifications. And lying in this distinction, traditional by Columbetti and Radcliffe, the distinction between reflexive feelings and reflective feelings. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Feelings that can be thematic and reflexive, like uh, a reflex. Yeah? This is a distinction introduced by Columbetti and Bradcliffe in this paper, uh, body feeling in the personalization. Okay. They are senses, uh, essential feelings, they are senses of possibilities. As experiences of possibilities, they also entail a reflexive self-consciousness, a feeling of being capable or I can. The changes in existential feelings show the dynamic nature, which correspond to changes in the space of possibilities. The issue of the regulation of existential feelings is an open question, as well as whether, despite their passivity, they are expressions of agency for which we are answerable. Of course, this entails the question of the conceptual content of existential feelings. However, this dynamic aspect means 
that there are experiential changes in the intentional dimension, making possible a phenomenology of existential feelings. Third, concerning function. Concerning function, existential feelings are pre-intentional. They can ground intentional states of any kind, emotions, recollections, actions, thoughts, perceptions, and beliefs. They are pervasive in the sense that they are positions in a modal space that works as a complex horizon for intentional states and comportments, structuring self-world relation or experience as a whole. So, Radcliffe admits that philosophical analysis of hope have already presented another mode of hoping, which is different in kind from any intentional state. For instance, Daryl, Daryl Webb identified two meta models of hoping, hope as a goal directed and the kinds of hope that lack a definite goal, taking the form of open-ended orientation toward the future. Similarly, uh, Victoria Maguire describes hope as an orientation towards the future that gives energy and direction to the regulation and development of hopers' agency. Thus, hope, hoping is more than focus on goals. It is to create an imaginative scaffolding that calls for the exercise of capacities, enabling the hoper to experience herself as an agent, potentially or actually. Remarkably, remarkably clear is the phenological approach by Professor Klaus Held in a paper of 2006. In conceiving hope as a stimulus shaped by a primary gestalt that transcends any specific intentional realization. Absolute hope as in German, Urvertrauen an der Welt, as a fundamental trust in future offerings of meaningful possibilities. Hence, Steinbock, again, in his paper of uh, 2006, conceived the ground of hope as not belonging to the category of object givenness, but capable of being functional in spite of the loss of every instance of hope. For Radcliffe, radical hope is an existential feeling, a pre-intentional bodily feeling that structures self worth relation as a whole. It is a feeling, not a propositional attitude, its phenomenality presents the quality of a general sense of the future. However, it's more specific than a sense that there is a future, understood just as a future moment in a temporal series. This specification is entailed by two fundamental aspects. The future as offering meaningful possibilities in which things may turn out for the good. Thus, radical hope is a felt sense of the good and the meaningful possibilities offered by the future. As pre-intentional, radical hope makes up a contest within which intentional hopes are shaped, nurtured, or lost. It's pervasive as a grounding of intentional hope. This kind of hope is also a dynamic phenomenon. It is capable of surviving the loss of intentional hopes and of systems of hope. Most important, it admits complex ways of erosion and loss, which may assume various configurations the varieties of radical despair. So the changes in the existential feeling of radical hope 
expresses a dynamic in the very model dimension of possibilities, which implies ways of losing and limitations in the systems of intentional hope. See, for instance, the difference between the complete lose or loss the of the capacity of hoping for anything at all and a demoralizing condition, the demoralization syndrome that not necessarily entails the absence of the capa that capacity. Sorry. Given this framework, the, the idea is that uh, the loss of radical hope may have different kinds, not just to have or not have radical hope, or not just a difference in degree, but different kinds of losing radical hope. Given this framework, what can we say about faith and radical hope? Radcliffe indicates two lines of comparison. The first, here, the term of comparison, uh, this is a, a sentence in, in, in that quotation, in that footnote quotation that I quote. Yeah? Here, the term of comparison is that of the terminate content. Faith may have a determinate content, whereas radical hope with, uh, with a determinate content is more than radical hope. It is the grounding unit of radical and intentional hope grounded intentional hope. Radical hope, however, may have no determinate content, may be functional despite the loss of all intentional hope with a determinate content. But is faith possible with no determinate content? That turns on the concept of faith and the structural features it expresses. If one identifies faith with belief and analyzes belief as the acceptance of a proposition or a set of propositions, then faith with no determinate content might be an inconsistent notion. On the other hand, faith devoid of determinate content might be conceivable if one endorses a non doxastic concept of faith. James Fowler approached faith, for instance, uh, uh, with a focus on fields beyond belief and religion. Following Niebuhr, Tillich, and Wilfred Cantwell Smith, he understands faith as deeper than the mere entertain entertaining a set of beliefs. Rather, he views it as an alignment of the will an arresting of the heart that gives orientation to the whole person. Faith emerges as a response of trust and loyalty to a transcendent, transcendent center of value and power. Moreover, this commitment of trust and loyalty has a fundamental condition. The faithful person must see or have seen that transcendent center of value and power. Acknowledgement of that very center is required if faith is to be conceived as different and deeper than belief. However, a center of value that can be experienced as the focal point of a trust that shapes one's life is a determinate content, even if only a very formal one. To be loyal and to be trustful to some transcendent center of value or power, for instance, to the numinous, is an attitude or feeling with a determinate content. The strong suggestion here is that faith as such implies a determinate content. If this is true, then there is no faith without a determinate content, whereas hope may be so radical, maybe go, may go so radical as to persist 
even in the absence of a determinate content. Yeah? It's a strong suggestion. Huh? The second point presented by Radcliffe. Um, in this case, the difference between faith and radical hope lies in the relation to certainty. Concerning faith, the relation is weak because certainty is not implied by faith. It is just one possibility, which in turn might receive additional modifications, for instance, unwavering certainty. In the positive case, the certainty involved in faith can be epistemic if faith has beliefs as its contents. A doxastic concept of faith includes levels of knowledge and justification of the concerning beliefs, even if it is a basic belief. On the other hand, a, a fiduciary or active concept of faith as presented by Fowler, for, for example, for instance, understood as commitment, loyalty, or trust in a transcendent center of power and value can be certain in another sense. Certainty in this case is a quality of the trust that shapes an entire way of life. One may speculate whether that kind of certainty has an ultimate epistemic nature because it's grounded in the experience of that center of value and, and power. The manner of givenness of this center would afford certainty to faith commitment. In contrast, radical hope does not belong to the space of certainty. It cannot be epistemic certain because it has no determinate context. Being pre-intentional, radical hope does not entail a belief that could be certain. Moreover, radical hope is a sense of the, of the existence of kinds of possibility. It is a feeling of position in a space of meaningful, engageable possibilities. If this feeling were tainted by certainty, it would change the modal status of those possibilities. Some of them would become necessary, others impossible. Thus, as with intentional hope, necessity and the impossibility of the prospect also make radical hope absent. In other words, if radical hope could be certain, it would not be hope anymore. As a result, radical hope is different from faith because the Former cannot involve certain states. My last point before the conclusion. Let me just drink some water. These suggestions need a much more detailed analysis. However, if the criteria just presented for distinguish between radical hope and faith are acceptable, then how are they related? Let me make three, three brief points. First, faith appears to be phenomenologically dependent on radical hope. Having content, faith is an intentional state. Therefore, it is grounded on a pre-intentional feeling. Radical hope is or could be this feeling only if faith presupposes a sense of the future as offering possibilities. 
This is the case with a doxastic concept of faith, as far as beliefs entail possibilities like confirming, refuting, evaluating, etc. The same seems to hold for a fiduciary notion of faith, as far as commitment to a center of value and power implies possibilities like the enduring of such a power or the continuous opening to its graceful donation. Hence, faith depends on radical hope. This can be dubbed a humanist concept of radical hope, more precisely, a secular humanist conception of hope. A view like this, for example, from Bagini and, and others, uh, um, a view, a conception, a uh, humanist, a secular conception of, uh, of, of hope, which does not risk the profound insight that the experience of hope is rooted in religious experience, like as stated by Professor Steinbach or Professor Klaushead. Uh, this humanist view of radical hope does, does not risk this step towards a conception of hope as rooted in religious experience. If faith depends on, on radical hopes. Uh, second point, point, there are complex relations of ontological dependence between hope and faith. On one hand, radical hope does not existentially depend on faith, since radical hope may survive the loss of all determinate content, including the loss of faith. On the other hand, faith appears to be essentially and existentially dependent on radical hope. The very identity of faith implies radical hope, and faith without radical hope would be just a representation. Third, third point, faith adds, to con adds contents to radical hope, rendering the hope intentional. But faith also affects the whole modal structure of radical hope. Because in faith, the very space of possibilities ex experienced as sustained by something other than the hope. Radical hope is a position in a modal space. Faith adds to this space a ground that is experienced as the source of good and meaningful possibilities. Experienced as safe and trustful, the space of engaged and sustainable possibilities, uh, using the words of Professor Steinbach, uh, I repeat, experienced as safe and trustful, the space of engaged and sustainable possibilities, possibilities appears as a gift towards which faith and gratitude may be conceived as the appropriate responses. This relation suggests a structure with two levels of modality. On the first, on the first level, Radical hope does not endow the specific possibilities of intentional hope with necessity. Despite not being a necessitating force, radical hope may change impossibility into possibility in the case of intentional hopes. On the second level, if radical hope is sustained by faith, then the whole space of meaning posits 
in radical hope becomes necessary. However, this kind of necessity is not transitive. The necessitating ground secures radical hope without making some specific possibilities of intentional hope necessary. The necessarily possible remains possible. But the certainty in faith points to a question that's not purely conceptual and must be addressed empirically and phenomenologically. The phenomenological analysis of conversion, for instance, here this paper of when, and of the oceanic, oceanic feeling as an existential feeling is crucial in this issue. I don't have time to present this point here and to develop this point here. Of course, this analysis of the experience of um, oceanic feeling and the conversion, uh, this analysis points towards the phenomenology of the vertical uh, givenness uh, to imply the, the concept uh, presented by uh, Professor Steinbock in his book, Phenology of Mysticism. I don't have time to, to develop more, uh, to present these points here. Uh, Fris, uh, for conclusion, um, let me uh, finish with a programmatic topic. It's just uh, a programmatic topic uh, uh, as a way of conclusion. Um, it's an avenue for further research. Um, this uh, programmatic top uh, points out another aspect of the model structure of radical hope. Right? It's a programmatic topic uh, which points out another aspect of this um, mod modality of radical hope or the mode of structure of radical hope. It's stressing, uh, and this is a quotation, uh, it's a large quotation, but it's, uh, uh, I read it in, in the following. It's stressing that the temporality of hope is not only futural, but is also grounded in the ecstasies of past. Heidegger, uh, in Being and Time, I, I have here the, the translator of Stambaum, um, and how, have also the, the, I will shift to German. Uh, um, Heidegger states, um, let me uh, read in your original. Aber auch ein Phänomen wie die Hoffnung, das ganz in der Zukunft von dir zu sein scheint, muss in entsprechender Weise wie die Furcht analysiert werden. Man hat die Hoffnung im Unterschied von der Furcht, die sich auf ein Mal und Futurum bezieht, als Erwartung eines Bonum Futurum charakterisiert. Entscheidend für die Struktur des Phänomens ist aber nicht so sehr der zukünftige Charakter dessen, worauf sich die Hoffnung bezieht, als vielmehr der existenziellen Sinn des Hoffens selbst. Der Stimmungscharakter liegt auch hier primär im Hoffen als einer für sich erhoffen. Uh, the translation of uh, Stambau in Maguire Robson is the same for this für sich erhoffen in German. Yeah? Der Hoffende nimmt sich gleichsam mit in die Hoffnung hinein und bringt sich dem Erhofften entgegen. Das aber setzt ein sich gewonnen haben voraus. Dass die Hoffnung gegenüber der niederdrückenden Bangigkeit erleichtert, sagt nur, dass auch diese Befindlichkeit im Modus des Gewesensseins auf die Last bezogen bleibt. Die erhobene, besser hebende Stimmung ist ontologisch nur möglich in einem ekstatisch-zeitlichen Bezug des Daseins 
zum geworfenen Grunde seiner selbst. Among many indications which I cannot address here, this passage points to the modal ontology of the hoper. Only an entity whose being is a dynamic troll possibility may be, may be vulnerable, sustainable, or it's an expression created by Heidegger, or having been affected from somewhere. Irgen woher getroffen sein, this is a word that Heidegger uh, used in the very end of this, this lecture on phenomenology of the religious life. Um, I'd repeat, only an entity whose being is a dynamic true possibility may be vulnerable, sustainable, or having been affected from somewhere. My suggestion is that at a developmental phenomenology, for instance, in this proposal of uh, Stefano Vincini in Sean Gallagher, um, my suggestion is that a develop developmental phenomenology of the modal dimension of existence may be crucial to the analysis of the experience of possibilities manifest in radical hope. Huh? Development of phenomenology of the modal the dimension uh, that uh, is put forth in the analysis of the experience of radical hope. Um, putting hope in uh, developmental setting is not new. Yeah, Victoria Vagir has presented a developmental approach, a genetic approach of hope. However, a genetic phenomenology of the space of possibilities would help us to further understand the ways of development, donation, and loss of hope. Well, thank you very much for this. Oh.